Hello everyone and welcome back. This is Bora. Uh, today we are going to talk everything about Magic Find from the technical aspects of how it works uh, to some tips and tricks uh, because honestly maybe after listening to me for 10 minutes uh, about all the technical aspects of Magic Find maybe you'll just think okay you know what just give me some advice on how to Magic Find better. That'll come later in the video if you guys want to skip ahead. Uh, great but if you want to learn more about Magic Find uh, and just how the mechanics all work, it'll help you uh, in the future making mistakes, farming the wrong places, all that kind of stuff. If you want to know more about the mechanics of Magic Find, stick around. Or like I said, if you just want to get right into the, the tips and tricks, you can. Uh, I'll put a chapter uh, in, in the in the description. So. Um, before we get going, guys, I'm going to turn on my stream right after this. So if you, uh, if you do, um, want to watch me stream and watch me magic find after this, please follow my Twitch channel, uh, which is Bora Gaming D2. Uh, and as always guys, please feel free to drop a like, uh, follow and subscribe because I will continue to do more educational content. And really I'm just here, uh, to help you guys get better at this game. Um, okay. So. Where do we start with Magic Find? Let's start with the diminishing returns of Magic Find. I'm going to throw up this chart. And so you'll see that there are pretty steep diminishing returns. And really the difference between 200 MF and 400 MF, while there is a difference, it's not that significant. So I always recommend, guys, don't go too hard on Magic Find. And there's a couple of reasons for that. And... You, you know, the counter argument to that is, hey, well, Bora, I'm looking at this chart and as I add more Magic Find, that number is increasing. So why wouldn't I stack Magic Find? And there's a couple of reasons for that. One being, whenever you stack Magic Find, you're sacrificing something else. So let's use the example of a gold wrap. 40 Magic Find, great, great item. But what, what could you be using instead? An Iraq, for instance, an Arachnid's Mesh which has plus one skills, 20 faster cast rate. So when you wear that gold wrap, you are sacrificing kill speed and clear speed. And when, like, let's just use the example of a sorceress. If you have a rack, you're doing more damage because you're plus one skill. You're, uh, you know, obviously if that 20 faster cast rate is helping you hit that next break point, then you're casting faster, you're teleporting faster. And all of that stuff matters when it comes to Magic Find. Now, I've gone on record many times as saying, always prioritize clear speed over Magic Find. And there's even uh, a couple of further reasons to that as well. And the number one being, high runes are not influenced by Magic Find in any way. There's no penalty. There's no benefit. High runes are going to drop if they drop. So that's one thing to consider with respect to, you know, stack and magic find. Now, everybody knows high runes are like the currency, right? So if you're looking to get some currency, upgrade your gear, and you want high runes, prioritize clear speed. Don't worry about your magic find. And, the, you know, just literally the more monsters you kill, the better chances you have of a high rune dropping. Further to that point, there are a specific monsters that actually have a better chance of uh, dropping runes. For instance, a ghost or a cow. So if you want to, uh, you can consider, uh, you know, running cows. If you really, if that, if high runes are what you're after, then you can consider running cows. Uh, you'll see here, this map has both cows and ghosts. And then you'll see there's also another modifier here, which is magic and gold find. And guys, this is the th this is the next reason to prioritize clear speed over magic find. You can get magic find as a mod on a map, and you can re-roll maps. And yes, it costs material, and yes, it might be a little bit tedious, but in a lot of cases, it can be very worth it. So like this map is a great map because one, it's cows. It has. Um, I, I'm a physical boson. There's no immunity, you know, to physical. There obviously there could be some super uniques or whatever that have uh, physical immunities in there. Ghosts are also physical immune, which is one of the unfortunate parts of me rolling this mod. Uh, but all told, cows. And again, I'm, I'm sticking to cows here. Cows are are, are a great uh, modifier here because they have no physical immunity and they have a high propensity of dropping high runes. So I love the cow map. And just to be clear, guys, the cow map has no bad element. So if you're a cold source, you can do cows. If you're a Javazon, you can do cows. You know, if you're a fire druid or trapper, uh, you know, assassin, you can do cows because there is no, uh, there's no bad element 
for doing cows. Again, of course, there's going to be super uniques that have certain immunities, but uh, largely the items within this map are going to be killable by every class and every build. So definitely recommend this cow map as many, you know, as many of these that you can find. Of course, the odds are now lesser of finding a specific type of map because there's so many maps. Anyway, that's a digression. That's all to say, guys, focus more on clear speed than you do on magic fine. Because again, this map is giving me uh, 97 additional magic fine. So just to show you guys, and by the way, if you hit eight on your keyboard, not on the numpad, but above your keys, you can pull up this. Here you see magic find 40. If I go down into this map, I now have 137. And again, if we go back to our chart and we look at our magic find, you can see that my chance of getting unique set or rare items has, has greatly increased. So boom, there you go. There's a uh, kind of tip number one. Now let's talk about how magic find actually works. So obviously there are a number of ways to get items to drop in this game. Let's just focus on killing monsters. You can also do chests, of course. There's quests, of course. I'm not going to focus on that today. I'm just going to focus on actual pure farming. Uh, and, and just to take a step back, guys, kick every barrel, open every chest while UMF. They do have great chances of dropping great items. Uh, but all that said, I'm going to focus on the monster killing aspect of getting items. So how does this work? Every time you kill a monster, there each monster has a uh, no drop percentage. And what that means is it might have a 50% chance of dropping nothing. So that is the very first interaction that happens when you kill a monster. The game runs a little clash test. Is no drop true? Yes. Okay. Nothing drops. Is it false? And that's where all of this stuff starts to kick in. So every monster in the game has an assigned maximum treasure class. It's closely linked to their monster level, which we'll talk about later. There's a lot of definitions that we need to get into. And I'm again, I'm trying to avoid getting overly technical. Um, but every unit in the game has a maximum treasure class that can drop. Uh, treasure classes range from 3 to 90. And they go 3, 6, 9, 12. So it goes up by 3s. All the way to, from 3 to 90. So that 90 treasure class contains all item levels 90 89, 88. Boom. That's treasure class 90. Treasure class 87, therefore, contains 87, 86, 85, and so on and so forth as you go down. Now, just because a monster has a maximum treasure class available to drop does not mean that it's guaranteed to drop that. In fact, the higher the treasure class, the less likely it is to drop that treasure class. So quickly, let's uh, use the example of... Um, of treasure class 90 uh, and you can see pindle skin can drop treasure class 90 but the odds are significantly lower than dropping 87 84 or 81 significantly worse and this is how it works for all monsters their highest treasure class is the least likely to drop so what does that mean now again each treasure class contains a class of items. So let's pull open again treasure class 90. These are the items that are contained within treasure class 90. So sacred armor has a item level or quality level and this is this is going to get a little bit confusing as we move forward but anyways I'll try to explain it as best as possible. Sacred armor has an item level of 88 uh, <clears throat> or sorry a, qual a quality level of 88. Corona all that kind of stuff. So when you think about the set and unique items that can drop that we're talking about here. Uh, Sacred Armor obviously can be Templars or Tyrael's Might. Corona can be, you know, Griswold's Valor or it can be Crown of Ages. So there's some great items in Treasure Class 90. And there's very, very few monsters in the game that can drop Treasure Class 90. So, again, the Treasure Class is going to be closely linked uh, to the monster level, but not exactly the monster level and well the perfect example is mephisto let's pull open mephisto stats he is monster level 87 and his maximum treasure class is 78 so this i'm going to take a pause here and just identify that this is one of the first mistakes that people are making when they comment and they say oh i've done this many runs of mephisto or andy mephisto does have a great loot table but it's primarily better uh, 
it's better for finding kind of those mid-tier items. And there are great items that Mephisto can drop, and I'm not trying to discourage anyone from uh, farming Mephisto, but at the end of the day, there are a lot of items that Mephisto can't drop. For instance, let's pull open uh, our friend Treasure Class 84, which contains Lacquered Plate. So because uh, Mephisto cannot drop Treasure Class 84, or 81, or 87, or 90, uh, all he can he cannot drop lacquered plate and what's a set lacquered plate Tal's armor. So if you're hunting for a Tal's armor and you're farming meth over and over, and you're thinking where's my Tal's armor? Well, there's your answer. He cannot drop a lacquered plate. Now there are very and this is where it's going to get really technical. So I'm going to bring you through two examples here to show how wildly different these things can be. So treasure class 63. It contains spiderweb sash. What does everybody think when they think spiderweb sash? Iraq. Great. So, again, spiderweb sash, the normal version of a spiderweb sash has an item level, what they've called Q level here, which I kind of disagree with their nomenclature here, item level 61. So if you pick up a white spiderweb sash, that is going to be item level 61. Now, this is where it gets a little bit tricky. Set and unique items have a varying uh, item level or quality level. That's where I think it makes sense to call it a quality level. So for instance, Arachnid's Mesh, let's pull it up here. It is item level or quality level 87. So there's two stipulations that need to be met for uh, a monster to be able to drop Arachnid's Mesh. One, the monster needs to be able to drop that, cl that treasure uh, class. And two, the monster level has to be equal or greater to the item or quality level of this unique item. So as you can see here, the item level or quality level is 87. And Mephisto, we'll pull up his stats again, he's level 87. He can also drop treasure class 78 or lower, so our two criteria are met. He can drop treasure class 63, which contains spiderweb sash, and his monster level is 87, which is greater than or equal to uh, the item level or quality level of Arachnid's Mesh. Great, so Mephisto can drop Arachnid's Mesh. So that's a great example of a, of a really solid item that Mephisto can drop. But again, he has that deficiency of he can't drop item classes uh, 81, 84, 87, 90. So what does this mean? Let's look at uh, another, Pindle is a, is a very confusing beast for a lot of people. And let's run through the full process here. So, um, let, let's quickly talk about area levels. So, an area level, uh, you know, like, uh, as you progress through the game, so Act 1 Normal to Act 5 Hell, the area level is uh, getting gradually higher. So as you have an area level, every monster in that area level is going to have a monster level equal to uh, that area level. Then there are champions within that area level. So a champion is going to be monster level equals area level plus two. So if you are in an 85 area level, a champion is going to be monster level 87. If, uh, if it's a super unique or his minion, and the minions are just like his little posse. And when, when you, uh, I encourage you to do this next time you magic find, hover over an, uh, uh, one of the monsters. And it'll say like undead minion or demon minion or whatever. So if it's a minion, he has the same monster level as his, as, you know, as his bro, as his, uh, um, as his super unique. So again, super uniques and their minions are area level plus three. So what does this all mean? Let's look at uh, Nilofax Temple. So this is where Pindle lives and it is area level 83. Now Pindle is a super unique and his minions will all be area level 83 plus three. So they're all level 86. And let's pull up Pindle very quickly. He's level 86 as you can see here. So what does this mean? Pindle can drop treasure class he can drop every treasure class he can drop 90 all the way through to three which is okay great start that means he can drop sacred armor but this is where it gets a little confusing so let's use this as an example uh templar's might 
Templar's Might has an item or quality level of 82. So let's talk about those two, two criteria again. Pindle can drop uh, Treasure Class 90, which contains Sacred Armor, and he is greater than or equal to uh, this item level of 82. So therefore, Pindle can drop Templar's Might. However, if you look at Tyrael's Might, he this is item level 87 and now pindle is monster level 86 and therefore he cannot drop Tyrael's might so if you do find a unique sacred armor from pindle it is guaranteed to be templar's might it cannot be Tyrael's might what's even more confusing about this is again pindle can drop up to treasure class 90 however he cannot drop an arachnid's mesh because again let's pull, pull open his stats again he's level 86 when we look at Arachnid's Mesh, it is item or quality level 87. Therefore, he is less than uh, the monster level that he needs to be to drop this item level. And therefore, Pindle cannot drop Arachnid's Mesh. So hopefully, that's not too confusing. But here's the, the, here's the pro tip, boys. Just focus on high area levels. So I will link to this in the uh in the pd2 or sorry this is from the pd2 wiki i will link to this in the, in the description this is from the pd2 wiki and again it indicates the all the level 85 area levels in the game and as you can see they have the vanilla level so they've actually made a lot of new level 85 area levels so for instance uh uh let's just Stony Tomb used to be uh, level 79 area level. Now it's 85. So what this means is it's opened up a lot of opportunities for you to farm one of these areas. So let's use the example of you play a fire sorceress. What you can do using this chart is actually sort by fire immune. And you can therefore see which 85 area has no fire immunes. And again, guys, you might run into a super unique that has... Uh, that has fire immunity. It, it might happen, but it, but none of the other monsters will have any fire immunity. So boom, Stony Tomb. All right, zero fire immunes. We love it. So let's farm this as a sorceress. So what does this mean again? Monster level is at the very lowest. Uh, is going to be level eighty five, and uh, champions in these areas are going to be level eighty seven. And super uniques are going to be level 88. Uh, and again, that doesn't mean that they can drop treasure class 90, for instance. But again, monster level is a pretty good indicator of what treasure class they can drop. So it's probably treasure class 84 or 87 that they're able to drop. And therefore, uh, or, or even 90 in a lot of situations. So therefore, this is an area where you can find Tyrael's might uh, in, in some situations. And maps are, obviously, uh, maps are all 85, or I think, I think they tried to do it, and sorry if I'm, if I'm, if I'm uh, getting this wrong here, but I believe tier 1 maps are uh, level 86, tier 2 are 87, and tier 3 are 88. I think that's how it works. Anyway, um, sorry if I'm, if I'm uh, wrong about that, but anyway, there is some directional accuracy there. Maps are still going to be the highest area levels that you can farm. So, let's jump into, with all that said, I know you guys always like to see uh, a bit of gameplay, and hopefully I can go down here and uh, actually find an item. So, I'm going to just start off by saying, guys, I've said this before, I like MFing uh, Eldritch and Shank, because one, they're extremely easy to kill, two, they have pretty good loot tables, uh, and three, there's no guesswork. They're in the same spot every time. As you can see, I hit that chest, I'm going to go back and kick that barrel, um, you know, we're probably, because I'm filming, of course, I've never, ever found anything while filming. Uh, so this is probably going to be a, a bit of, uh, uh, you know, unconsequential gameplay here. But let's jump jump into the map. And, and I had farmed like two seconds here earlier. So uh, this is pretty high density. It's a, it's a little bit dangerous for me to do uh, alone. But here we go. We're going to we're going to give it a go. Uh, so again, cows, the reason that I love this map, they're not physical immune. And again, I did roll the the ghost mod which is a little bit unfortunate because they are physical immune um but there you go boom tear haunch right off the bat and so uh i am able to obviously kill physical immunes kind of one at a time using magic arrow but uh all told you know 
we're we're looking pretty good here. So, uh, I I like to farm cow maps because of their uh, again their fi- their no physical immunity and because they can drop a lot of high runes. And we're gonna keep going here until somebody drops a rune, uh, just to prove my point because you know that's what it's all about. Um, and yeah, hopefully, like I said, uh, it's a little bit of a uh, dense map, so I'm trying not to get myself into too much trouble here. Okay, so we've got a rally rune. Um, and as you farm a full cow map, you'll find that a lot of runes drop. In fact, I think I tried to count how many runes dropped last time I did one of these cow maps. It wasn't mega dense or anything, and there was like 20 plus runes that dropped. So uh, all told, a lot of opportunity for you to get that high rune and again bring keys and open chests and here is another physical immune i'm going to use magic arrow quickly uh, to get through these guys and then we'll go back to farming cows um so let's talk about other areas that you can farm so again i will never stop directing you guys to that area level uh portion of the pd2 website area level 85 are great places to farm some of these maps are a little daunting for solo i did do a i just did a video um, indicating which, uh, which map you can do. Like if you're single element, that doesn't mean that you can't do maps. Again, the blood moon map that I'm doing right now is good for all damage types. Uh, so highly recommend this cow map. Um, but beyond that, there is at least one map, uh, per, well, I shouldn't say per tier. There's at least one map per damage type that you can do without worrying about running into a ton of immunes. Um, so, uh, I do refer you to my last video. Uh, I always put chapters uh, in my video, so if you uh, if you want to skip ahead to uh, me talking about those maps, feel free to look at the description, find the chapter in there, and go ahead. But all told, I've indicated which maps uh, you can do as you know a single element class. The one thing I will say, the one mistake that I did make is I left out the tier two jungle map, which is very good for fire uh, element classes. So if you're playing Dragon Den, if you're playing Hydra Source or Meteor Source or whatever, uh, a lot of people are playing the fire Druid as well. The uh, tier two jungle map is a great choice for you. Um, so I'm not gonna uh, obviously do this entire. Uh, I'm not gonna do this entire map while I'm uh, filming this video, but just wanted to show you guys a bit of gameplay. Obviously, about two seconds into this, we found tier haunch. I'm gonna sign off here by first slamming these tier haunches, so that I can maintain my record of bricking every item I uh, I find on stream. So let's do it. I was re-rolling this Grand Charm uh, earlier, just FYI. Okay, we didn't brick. We got all resistances. I think these already have all res. They do. So basically we got more resistances, uh, but they are just plus one. So not great, but whatever. We'll give them away. So um, I hope this clarifies everything you need to know about Magic Find. Again, without getting too technical... Uh, and if you do have some clarifying questions, I'm happy to help. But guys, I mean, I put this together with public information. If you want to find the item level, literally Google that item. Just Google Arachnimesh D2 and you'll be able to pull up the Diablo 2 wiki, which will tell you the item or quality level of, uh, of an Arachnid's Mesh. And therefore, you know that you need at least monster type uh, 87 to be able to find Arachnid's Mesh. And so what does that mean? Again, let's work backwards. Monster level 87 equals a champion uh, in monster le- or in area level 85 or a super unique in area level a- uh, 84. So, you know, because of the, the plus two and the plus three that I indicated before. So again, if you guys do have any clarifying questions, please let me know in the comments below. Uh, but again... If you want to know more about Magic Find, there are so many resources uh, for this. And I highly recommend that if you're a nerd like me and you like to understand the mechanics behind all this kind of stuff, just start Googling. There are guides on this. Uh, there are a lot of free resources like the Diablo 2 Wiki, like uh, Ariad Summit, all of that kind of stuff. So feel free to check all of that out. Guys, this is Bora signing off. Uh, again, any questions, direct them to me at uh, Bora, hashtag 7700 on uh, Discord. 
to follow my live stream and I love when people in my chat talk to me in live stream uh, I, on Twitch. Board Gaming D2 is my Twitch. Uh, I'll link it in the description as well. Uh, and I'm about to stream uh, right after I upload this video. Uh, and of course, you can leave a comment. I do try to respond to all of them. Sometimes it takes me uh, a day or two to get around to them because I do typically get a lot of comments in combination with, uh, with the Discord messages. So anyway, guys, signing off. Hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully this will help you uh, avoid making uh, magic find mistakes, stacking too much MF, MFing the wrong areas, not prioritizing clear speed. I think those are the biggest ones to avoid. So hopefully this was helpful and I will see you guys next time. Cheers.